years we spent a lot of time on three issues North Korea trade disputes and burden sharing the uh, obviously the, the how much both sides both militaries will pay to host US troops in South Korea those issues as important as they were often got bogged down we were overly tactical and essentially the alliance became an upside down pyramid focused on these three issues here in this summit we saw a broadening we saw a strategic framework outlined. And in a way, it was a return to what we saw for really the last 10, 15 years. Global Korea, you remember that, the new frontiers where the United States and Korea were not working just on the peninsula. They were working in Asia and around the world. And that's, I think, what we saw here. attracted my attention the most is global vaccine partnership that both leaders agreed on. You know, South Korea has the vaccine production capability. As far as vaccine production capability is concerned, South Korea is one of the leading countries in the world, but we don't have the original technology with which we can produce vaccine. The U.S. has the original technology and production capabilities, but not enough to provide it to less fortunate countries and people all around the world. Uh, the alliance was going through, as you said, very difficult times during the presidency of Donald Trump, but this summit was really a, a truly a turning point that now we can restore some some semblance of normalcy to the alliance and upgrade it to a truly global partnership. First, I really do like the civilian space cooperation. And it, part of it, it comes back to the fact that in 2015, 2016, we negotiated and signed the first space, civilian space framework, rather, with the Republic of Korea, between the United States and the Republic of Korea. And that was the first space framework in Asia uh, between the United States and an Asian country. That was very significant. And what I liked about this summit is it built on that. There's a lot of interesting civilian space research in the commercial sector. You can also argue in the scientific community. There's just a whole lot of really interesting things that I think can be harnessed there. That's point one. Second point, obviously, the, the joint statement, uh, and you saw uh, former Secretary Kerry, now Special Envoy Kerry, in one of the, the, the shots there, the environment, uh, really bold action befitting two great allies working on perhaps the most significant global challenge of our time. Very bold strokes, very good stuff there. <music> President Biden has made climate change uh, part of his agenda uh, and a key part, and that means that we're going to have to take and move towards electric vehicles or perhaps, uh, as Korea's looked into, hydrogen-powered vehicles. So these types of technologies, which are the wave of the future in the auto industry, but also how we address climate change, I think will be a key area. I would expect, as you mentioned earlier, uh, 5G to be on there. Uh, Samsung, I think, has an important role it can play in deploying 5G around the world as one of the major producers in this area. So there's a key synergy there. This is a pro-values, pro-cooperation summit. So I think they made very clear the U.S. and South Korea intend to work on issues regionally and around the world of great importance, economics, uh, applications of high technology, um, others that were in this list that they put in the joint statement. Some have talked about what South Korea and the U.S. are going to positively work on together. They emphasized uh, human rights. They emphasized democracy in their statement. They emphasized rule of law. Now, I'd say, too, on the uh, cooperation that the summit specifically mentioned cooperation between the U.S. and uh, South Korea, matching together the U.S.'s vision for free and open Indo-Pacific and South Korea's new Southern policy. So the summit endorsed the new Southern policy. Uh, you can cooperate without having to be linked up institutionally 
just by pursuing the same ends. Republic of Korea and the United States are both nations built on innovation. And we must both meet the challenges facing us today and look to what is possible for tomorrow.